Okay, I want to do a uh, short video, and this one basically has to do with uh, talking a little bit about projects. And I wanted to give people who are really struggling a couple of ideas, uh, because I really do want you to turn in your project by midnight tonight. So uh, I'm going to put, post this, and I'll send out another uh, email. So let me just uh, talk about a couple of things. So one project you can do, and let me switch the cameras here, and oops, here and so here's the here's your board now one of the things you can do that that works really well is you can use the UTSA letters and you can um, set it up so that so that you can uh, do a Simon Says routine okay so what Simon Says does you blink the LED and you associate a unique color of the LED of the RGB LED with each of the four letters. Now you you have obviously three colors: uh, red, blue, and green. And you can use white. That's easy to identify. So if you do R G B and white, that will identify the four letters. You can do red for U, blue for T, green for S, and white for A. And if you do that, then um, you can you can display on the LED uh, like you could do red red okay so then you're supposed to punch the u button two times so you punch two two and then uh if you're correct then maybe you get a i don't know a blue green or an, an orange or some other color and if it's and if it's bad then maybe you just get you know a solid red or a flashing red or something and that but if you get it right then what happens you you get a you wait a little bit and then you get another series of colors uh, so now maybe you get red red white okay so now you touch u u a and basically it just keeps going with pseudo random sequences until you fail and that, that's the simon says game and then once you get the 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 sign that it fails you can punch uh you can punch the uh you can punch the reset button and start the game over. Or well, you can not reset. You could, well, you could do it with reset, or you could also do it with RB7. Okay, and uh, and then you generate a new random number and a new sequence, and away you go. Okay, so that's one thing you can do. The other thing you could so that's Simon says. Now you can even spice this up a little bit since you have to have a display. Uh, you can also use the display. You can you can keep score by sending the score to the, the desktop. Uh, and show how many sequences uh, you've gotten right and keep high scores and that sort of thing. And you could even, if you wanted, you could store the high scores in the EEPROM on the chip, which you can, uh, which would actually be non-volatile. So even when you turned it off, you'd still have this high scores saved. Uh, or, uh, so that would be, that that's, would be plenty of modules for two, even maybe three people. Uh, you could also spice it up a little bit by uh, putting a, uh, a little uh, buzzer and I don't know if I have any buzzers here because I uh, took all my parts into UTSA uh, maybe I'll look real quick just to see yeah so you can you can take a little buzzer like this and you can actually connect it to this terminal drive it with your 9 volt battery and then you can set up a little loop uh, that uh, plays tones on it you change the uh, the timing factor in the loop, and uh, you'll have a different tone. And uh, so, and you can do that. You could set that up in a number of different ways. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, it would actually be fine. You could even drive this, the input to this switch, with your. Uh, you could even drive that input with your uh, arbitrary waveform generator. And uh, and that that module on the chip and that would work fine. You could uh, actually the the chip doesn't have an arbitrary waveform generator. Uh, some do, but this one doesn't. But what it does have, it has a timer a timer two, four, and six. You could use timer six. You could set it up to cause an interrupt, and the interrupt routine would just toggle the. Uh, the output to the green terminal, and uh, and then you can all you'd have to do if you wanted to send a different tone, is you put a different constant into the uh, um, put a different constant into the 
uh, into the, uh, the the timer six uh, module so that it its interval is different. And you can change the interval, will change the frequency of the tone, and um, and that way you can you can make a you know you can make several different frequencies of tones, and you can also turn them on and off simply by uh, simply by uh, uh, turning on and off the uh, the tris switch the the tris bit for the pin that you're using to drive the two transistor switch. So let's say for instance. Um, Let's say you were going to use, uh, let's see if I have it handy here. Uh, okay, I got one. Yeah, let's say you wanted to use, uh, you know, pick, so let's say you wanted to use RA4. So, um, so here's RA4, plug this in, and then you just go to, you just plug this right into the, here, let me flip, sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. So you plug the, the green wire into RA4. And then you plug the other one in here to the two terminal. Either terminal will be fine because they're exactly the same. Right there. And then when you plug that in, whenever this is high, it'll it'll put nine volts out here if you're driving it with a nine volt battery. When it's low, uh, then it'll put out zero. And then you can you can have this uh, just continually running based on an interrupt. You can change the frequency by changing uh, by changing the uh, by changing how the timer's uh, counting, uh, you can have it, uh, whenever it times out, you can initialize the, the timer with a starting count that decreases the length of time, and you can change that starting count. It can be in a global variable, and you can just uh, rewrite that in your main program, and then your interrupt service routine, whenever the timer times out, the interrupt service routine toggles, uh, toggles this pin that's controlling the green terminal, and also rewrites a starting value into the timer one uh, counting register. And in the process of doing that, then you're gonna change that period, which will change the frequency. And then when you wanna turn it off, you just take the, the tris bit for RA4 and set it as an input instead of an output, and boom, it'll switch off. So, um, so that way with changing the tris bit, you can turn it on and off, and changing the global variable with the count bit uh, the count, the, the initial count that the interrupt service routine is going to put in the timer, you can uh, change the frequency. So you could generate tones, and um, and that would be really cool. Um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, well, I don't know if I'll program that up, but it's pretty straightforward, not too difficult. So that's Simon Says. Okay, another thing you can do, you can do a cipher lock. Uh, the cipher lock can have, you can use your 2 line by 16 LCD display, and the two-line by 16 LCD display uh, can show a uh, can show uh, the status of the lock and say it's locked. And then you can put in one code using the touch buttons, right? So it can be U U T S T U or whatever. And you can have the LED flash green each time you put in a successful input. Red if you get if 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 uh, uh, well, and once you put it all in, or you can have it flash blue when you with each input, you can have it then when you get in all the inputs and you get the correct one, it'll flash green, open the lock, or you can have it flash red if it's wrong. You can also have a, um, and then your LCD will show lock is unlocked, and you could even drive the, you could even drive the lock uh, using the green terminal or using uh, one of those uh, solid state relays. Uh, if you happen to have one of those locks, you could even you could even uh, hack it and, and open it and close it directly. Um, and if you don't have one, that's okay. You can simulate it. If you put in a different code, then the L the in the uh, two line by sixteen LCD display will show uh, code entered to change the access code, and then you can put in a sequence that's the new sequence to unlock the lock. Uh, so you could set it up like that. That's a perfectly great project uh, and it's all doable with what you have uh, you don't have to add anything at all unless of course you want to add the lock and you could do that um, but you don't re don't even really have to do that and that that takes a little bit of work because you have to actually uh, design all of the uh, uh, all of the human interface stuff and that's a little tricky 
let me let me just talk a little bit about that and then uh and then i think so those are two examples simon says and cipher lock using touch buttons now there's a couple of modifications you have to make let me just speak to that um so one of them is you have to make sure that uh that you set it up so that uh let's see let me pump this open oh what in the world did it do it went away unbelievable i swear i don't think i hit the i don't think i hit the x button well maybe i did anyway interesting all right now we'll try it one more time all right okay all right i don't know why that was difficult okay so a couple things to keep in mind um remember that humans respond at a much slower rate than uh than your computer runs your computer can do uh at, at the four megahertz clock we set and it can go to 32 we're only using four uh, you can execute a million instructions a second. At the 32, you can execute, what, 8 million instructions a second. That's a lot of instructions. And uh, that's a whole lot faster than humans can move fingers or think or do anything. Um, well, we can think pretty fast, I guess. But actually, we, our neurons are in the millisecond range. They're not, they're not running at megahertz. But we have trillions of them processing simultaneously and that's really what gives us our advantage um, and somehow our brains work in total parallel but we think in kind of serial thoughts it's really weird anyhow um, so so you can do that uh, when you when you set up the human interface uh, like on the touch buttons one of the things you you want to do is you want to you want to uh, modify the code a little bit uh, you could have it set up so that you could punch more than one button at a time. For instance, another another uh, really cool project is to use the UTSA buttons and uh, read all the buttons at once. So the way you have to do that, the way the way we're doing it in the in the lab, you did. We had a counter. We tested H or we tested U. If U was true, then we set mode to to one. Um, or actually, I think. We start off mode was equal to three. If U was touched, they would be equal to zero. Then we check T. If T was touched, then we would change it to one. If S was touched, we change it to two. If A was touched, we change it to three. And then uh, if nothing was touched, it would still be the initial value, which I guess was would have been four. So we we set it at four to start with. And then if any one of the ones is touched, then it's less than four. But the problem with that is that if you touch U and T, then it's going to show 1 for T, not, not 0 and 1. So what you have to do if you want to, if you want to have more than one button touchable at, at any given time, you have to create an array. And when you test U, then you have to save the fact that U was touched in an array, like you can call it touch, uh, and it can be uh, up to, what, four values, I guess, well, three values. Uh, well, four values: zero, one, two, three, and you say, and you set them all. You set them all to zero before you scan, and then when you scan, if you d detect U as touched, you, you set uh, touched uh, U e touch zero equals one, and then if you also detect T touch T equals one, and uh, if you also detect S, detect S, you set t touch two equals one, and if you detect A, then it's touch A, uh, then it's touch three equals one. And then if none of them are touched, you set them all back to zero. Anyway, so you can, you, can, you can create a little array and you can actually have multiple touches. And one of the students uh, a couple years ago had it set up so they could use uh, four fingers on the touch button. My, my fat fingers hardly work. But you could use four fingers and you could touch any of the 16 four-bit patterns. And then you could display on a seven-segment LED uh, the hex letter or you could output the hex letter on your two line base 16 lcd display which those that's another one so those are three totally acceptable projects you can do uh just using you know just using your board the touch the touch and the touch letters uh 
and obviously you can then enhance it if you want to. Uh, just let me know if I have a, a whole bunch of these buzzers. Uh, so if you want one of these little buzzers, let me know. I'll be happy to uh, let you check one out and use it. Um, some of the buzzers are set up, if you power them, they, they play a tone. But some of them, uh, all they do is click. And so you, ha you actually have to send a square wave to it. And then that square wave will create a tone. And you do have to send it probably at 9 volts. So you do need to use the green terminal and the two transistor switch to make it sound uh, you know, nice and loud. But it, that'll sound pretty loud. That'll be good. All right, so that's several, that's several suggestions. I'm, I, I'm probably going to let it go at that. I, I have lots of other parts. So besides all that, I have passive infrared displays. You can set that up. Uh, you can detect somebody moving in front of your board. Uh, you can display it on your LCD display. Uh, I have a GSM. So you could create a GSM account and set that all up, and you can actually send data uh, to um, any cell phone you want. Uh, uh, you can do all sorts of crazy things that way. Um, and I forget. Anyway, there's a lot of things you can do. I have GPSs. I have accelerometers. I have the 9-axis IMU, the 9-degree uh, of freedom IMUs, where you have an accelerometer, a gyro, and a, and a mag magnetometer, all three axes, plus an altimeter. Uh, so you can, you can display altitude and, um, you know, the, what, you know, your accelerations and, and your gyro settings and your, uh, and your magnetic settings all on one chip. Uh, I, I just have a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I have little laser distance measures. I have the pings. The ping sensors are really uh, pretty easy to use. You can display the distance on the LCD display or on your laptop using the, CR, the, C, the CR2102 dongle and putty. There's a lot of things you can do. So uh, you can use your little analog board and just display the temperature. Or you can use the analog board to um, to uh, uh, to measure the, the ambient light or something. And you could even calibrate it if you had, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure how you would calibrate it. You'd need a little photometer. Um, anyway, lots of different things. So uh, be sure and write up something and turn it in today and get started on it. Because uh, you, you do have to do this if you're going to get a grade in the course. So, all right, with that, we'll turn it, uh, quit.